Okay, we're going to start on our next little project here. This is a this is a little job that I'm going to be machining for uh, Paul's Welding Service. He's out of St. Paul Park, Minnesota, and uh, he sent me this little sketch here. This is a this is a tool that he asked if I could uh, help him make, and uh, just uses a piece of square stock, and he needs some different squares milled on there. So a one inch square. We'll start off with a one inch square, and then an inch and an eighth square, inch and a quarter one and three eighths and then this is inch and a half right there all right so we're just going to do some equal milling and then have a hole drilled in there on the end and he says this has to do with uh, opening the uh, hopper for uh, rail cars so i'm not really sure what that what that is i can imagine but i've never really seen that but anyway we're going to give it a shot and see if we can make this tool this is a piece of 4140 i uh, bought this uh, one foot piece off of master car and he asked if we could uh, make something that's, uh, you know, tough because it is going to be used for turning. So we'll, uh, what we'll do is we're going to machine this and then I'm going to use my Hot Shot 360 oven that I got from uh, Barzi Industrial. And we're going to see about doing a heat treat on this 4140 and making it a little bit tougher. Okay, so uh, what we'll do is uh, before we start. We'll go ahead and test it on the Rockwell hardness tester and just see where it's testing out at. And then once we get everything finished up and we've done our heat treat, we'll do another test and see where it finishes out at. So pretty simple, straightforward job. And we're going to use the K&T Miller machine for this. We'll go set it up with a, uh, with a stop on the end. We'll just get our cutter set and uh, we'll just cut one side. We'll take it, flip it, put it back in the vise, mill the other side and uh, just keep doing it that way. I don't think that there's a, a real hefty tolerance on these squares. We'll just make sure that we're not oversized and so that it'll fit down inside whatever square hole that this is going to be used in. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on it. All right, we're going to go ahead and do our first initial test. So I got to do the preload on it. Three revolutions drop the weight and we'll let it settle out all right so give it just a few seconds and we should be good and then go ahead and pull this handle back forward and I'm reading 12 and a half so I was very close and that's probably going to be uh, very consistent. We'll do it one more time. Let's just slide it down and uh, we'll do it again. Bring it back up. You see this little dial here? So it's three revolutions. Set it to zero. And that's going to be on that little red dot. Release the weight. Let's go for it. Same place. 12 so let's call that 12 rockwell rockwell c i think what we'll do is uh we'll start i was going to show you i've got it cut right at uh eight and seven eighths so we've got about an eighth of an inch to take off the ends so we'll just uh side mill the ends i'm going to use this cutter right here this inch and a half six fluid end mill and we'll just side cut that and we could use this to mill the squares on there like we want but the the thing that i want to avoid is uh, where each step is going up to the next square size i'd like a little radius in there to kind of help strengthen that square so when we go to do our milling we're just going to use uh, we're going to use this insert mill right here you know these inserts have a radius on there so the corners where it mills will have a radius in there so i think that's what we're going to handle right there We're going to have a 60,000 step to cut and we're going to have a 5,000 speed rate coming across. So here we go.
Nothing to it. All right, that looks good. There's our, there's our cut. We'll flip it around to do the same thing, get it milled to size on the length. Gonna get a measurement here and see what we got left to take. Looks like 28 thousandths. Using our calipers here, we uh, we've got it at uh, 751, 8.751. So we we hit our length there. I'm going to go ahead and just make some reference lines on um, on the block here. Where we're going to be milling it, kind of show you each step is inch and a quarter further down. So I'm just going to make some sharpie marks here, kind of serve as a visual reference of what we're going to be doing you know each one progressively larger in square size i'm going to use a stop here this is this is one of those edge stops that you can actually flip out of the way if you need to uh, bring a stop in and move it every time but i think we'll be fine on just leaving it right there and what i want to pay, uh, pay attention to is where the uh, edge of the cut line is actually over the uh, side of the vise right here so that whenever I loosen it, take it, and uh, flip it back in here, I don't have to worry about any burrs uh, catching it on the parallels and kicking it up just a little bit, making it out of tolerance there. So just uh, each step, we'll just make sure that we pull it out another inch and a quarter. I'll move my stop down and uh, so that it clears every time. doing is I'm going shallow on the depth and I'll cut all four sides and then once I get it all cut I'll just mic it and then split the difference and then go around four more times and cut it right on size there all right so we want to rotate it Thirty-eight RPM, two-inch cutter, and I've got it on a uh, sixteen thousandths feed rate. There. 
right, let's take her out and measure it and see how far off we are. That one looks to be about 48 thousandths. That side's 46. All right, so we'll just take, so we'll just go ahead and make, take 48 thousandths off off the square and bring it right to one inch. One under and one under. Nice. All right. So we'll go on to our our next step there. Inch and one eight. That's how she's looking so far. We got our one inch, an inch and an eight. Just finished this. Wanted to give it a check and uh, make sure that we hit our size good. It looks like we're dead on. Inch and an eighth on that one. And a few tenths over inch and an eighth. I think we're going to be good though on that. There it is. It's squared up. Okay, all right. So next size is going to be inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter, inch and three eighths. Just keep moving on with it. So with each progression there, I just keep moving the, uh, the stop down inch and a quarter so that our cut line overhangs the vise there. So we've got her moved down now and ready to go.
doing our uh, cleanup pass here to get it down to our uh, finished size. All right, our piece is looking real nice. We got it all filed and deburred, and the uh, the last square there, the one and three eighths, turned out real nice. We got it within two thousandths, or we finished it two under, one and three eighths there. So looking real good. So the last thing that we got to do as far as machining goes, we have a hole to drill in it. Uh, over on this side, it's going to be a twenty-seven sixty-fourths hole through there, and it's going to be inch and one eighth from the end. So. Right about, right about in there, we'll have us a, a hole to drill, and it's going to be 27 64 So we'll go to the, uh, we'll go over to the do all mill, set it up, do that one op, and then from there to be time to uh, do the heat treating on it. All right, just double checking, inch and one eighth, and then we are centered on our uh, block right there. I'm just gonna spot it with a uh, spotting drill there. And we're gonna go in with our 2764, so that's the drill's hole size, and that'll work there. I'm gonna use the uh, little Noga Mini Cool here. Nothing to it. Let's put our maker's mark on there. We're going to use the dake. up Okay, all of our machining now is done for the uh, square tool here. We got our uh, touch mark there on the end. And so now it's ready for uh, heat treating. And there's our, there's our drawing there that 
looks like it's matching up pretty good. So one of the things that uh, right now I'm actually waiting on my uh, quenching oil for the uh, heat treating should be here today. But one of the things I overlooked was uh, a common practice whenever you're heat treating steel, carbon steel, is that they, uh, they make this stainless wrap, stainless foil wrap that you wrap your part in to make it airtight once you stick it in there. And that helps create the oxidation on the surface there whenever the, uh, you know, the part is uh, going through the heat treating and starts touching the oxygen. The uh, foil wrap helps keep the part clean. So I think I'm going to go ahead and get some of that ordered today and uh, get it coming. It should be here tomorrow if I order it today. And go ahead and uh, try the stainless wrap on this part and maybe help protect some of the uh, clean machine surfaces on there. So we're going to try it anyway. It's uh, something new for me, so I'm kind of learning as I go here. But once we get ready to do our heat treating on this part, I'll bring it back and we will share that process of uh, going through that. All right. We're going to go ahead and get started on our on our heat treating of our square drive tool here. I've got my quenching oil in and I also bought some of this stuff here. I got one of these bags to try. This is the uh, uh, stainless steel foil bag. And then uh, once I had found this, I found the actual uh, tool wrap there. So I got a little roll of that 309 uh, 2000 stick. And it's just, it's kind of like aluminum foil, but it's the tool wrap. But I think I'm going to go ahead and try the uh, the bag for this one right there. And it's got some good instructions in there to follow on how to how to do that. And it's supposed to be, um, you know, you can cut yourself very easily with this stuff being so thin. It's like razor. So I got me a pair of these uh, uh, cut resistant Kevlar gloves to use. So anyway, we'll get it wrapped up in there, hopefully, like it should be. And then we'll go to our heat treat oven and get started. I'm try to get her try to get her open here. Let's see if this thing will even fit in there. May have to go to the other side, go the other way. I think we got her in there. Well, it probably won't qualify as grade eight in the uh, heat treating world, but this is my first wrap. And it is a little difficult to uh, handle, especially with the gloves being kind of slick like this. Really need the ones probably with some rubber. But anyway, I've, I've got it folded. I don't have it folded three times, but I've got it folded twice. And I've tried to kind of seal it up the best I can using my pliers to uh, pinch it together. So we're just going to roll with that. We're going we're gonna to try that, and uh, hopefully that's going to help us protect our part from... Uh, you know the scaly carbon build up on the outside while we're doing our our uh, heat treating there all right all right we're ready to get it stuck in there um, got it set at 1650 I'm just running it in manual mode so just set it to temperature and I'm going to be monitoring the clock I still got to uh, play with the automatic settings on it and program it so here we go it uh, recommended to uh, stick it in once it's preheated so it's going to lose a bunch of heat once I open the door but it'll get right back up there so here we go. I've got a couple of those uh, blocks in here to set it on. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to go, uh, I'll use my phone and set a timer. And I plan on letting it go um, because I want it to heat up 
and this is what a process I'm still learning. I'm just going to set it for two hours. It's uh, the, what I researched that I have learned. It's uh, one hour per, uh, per inch of thickness. So the block is inch and a quarter thick on the thickest end. So I'm just going to give it a little extra and we're going to go two hours and then we'll pull it out and we'll do our quenched in. This is the quenching oil that I bought. Got it from McMaster Car. Quench fast quenching oil as recommended from Stan. Okay, we've been running exactly two hours in the oven, so it is time to pull that piece out and we're going to do the oil quench there with our quenching oil. Got my PPE on, gonna have some gloves on, I got my tongs ready. So let's do it. Well, that's been an adventure, <laughs> getting that thing cooled down there. It's apparent for a part this size, maybe that five gallon bucket really isn't enough oil. Probably needs double that, really. But I finally got it cooled down. I got it to the point where it wasn't um, smoking so bad. I, uh, I cut the uh, foil, pulled it out of there, and seem to be cooling it off a little bit better now. Should be good to go. While I'm waiting on the oven to get down to 500 for our tempering stage, I want to see where it's at now. I think it's going to be softer than what I expected it to be. Yeah, 25, so we've a little more than doubled what we started with there. So I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, didn't let it heat treat long enough, didn't quench it right, I'm not really sure. So um, I guess I gotta keep learning. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and temper it just to be safe. We've been running for 40 minutes in the heat treat oven now for our temper. I'm going to go ahead and take a peek, see what it looks like, see if our uh, part is the proper color there. Our, uh, our color. After temperament, I come back over to the tester. I wanted to see where it was uh, finished at on our hardness, and to my surprise, it's showing harder now than it was before. So I don't know what's going on, if I've done something wrong, but I felt like I did the same exact thing earlier. But we're showing about 41 and a half Rockwell C on that test right there. So I am going to test it in three other, well, three places total and see if it's uh, getting about the same reading there. And then I'll, uh, I'll let you know. All right, so I've done a few tests along there. And this, this area here where I was testing it, I got it, there was two times where I got it in the mid 40s. And then I did it again. And then it was in the uh, you know mid to upper 20s there. 
So I'm averaging across there, I'm gonna say uh, 26, 27 Rockwell. So I'm not sure why I'm getting a higher reading there a couple of times. So uh, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm screwing up and I'm not getting it set in the tester right. So I feel pretty confident because of all the other spots that I've tested that uh, we're right there in that mid 20s range. So that's, that's gonna be it, I'm gonna call it. All right guys, I'm bringing you back one more time to discuss this tool. Uh, because what I did was after that last clip there, I had um, I, I rewrapped this in uh, the stainless foil. I wrapped it myself, and we did another heat treat on it. And I wanted to uh, try to compare the sticking it in the oven and uh, heating it up with it being cold versus sticking it in an oven that was already hot. And uh, and then also after the removal of it, cutting the foil off and then uh, doing the quench in the oil. So with me being new at this and this all new to me, you know, this is all learning for me and uh, what the proper steps to take and the proper sequence and uh, what you should do and what, what not to do. I feel like the time that I spent sitting this in a vise, cutting the foil, getting it out of there, it was rapidly cooling down when I, I think that you should have this immediately dunk into the oil. Uh, but then again, I'm just learning. So I was trying to get this to a more consistent hardness range. And when I did this for a second time, I went ahead and took what was left out of this block because I had it was a 12 inch length. So I cut this off and I test this without the foil. So you can see the a little bit of carbon build up around the outside of it which uh, to me doesn't matter. I mean, that's how, that's how it looks a lot of like your hot rolled. It's got a little bit of scale. But this is what I'm finding. I, I test this a, quite a few times on the hardness tester. And this is what I'm getting, inconsistent hardnesses on each side. So this one here is, is like where I want it to be. This is at 51, and this is after temper, by the way. We've already tempered it. And this side is at 38. So what I'm wanting to know is does it matter like when you set it in the oven just the, the way the part is sitting in the oven during heat treat you know I was setting it horizontally like that on a couple of little blocks would it matter if it's standing up so that you get a little more consistent heat around the entire part on this one you could do that but I wouldn't be able to stand this one up and that's why I had it setting on those little blocks to try to you know keep it up so that the air could get to the bottom side uh, you know the best that it could so I, I do want to thank uh, my buddies Tom Lipton and Stan Zakowski. You know, we've been texting, and they, they've been trying to give me some pointers and uh, things like that. They've got more experience doing this, and uh, I do welcome anybody with uh, proper experience with this that really knows the, uh, the system and the uh, proper techniques. If you want to drop some comments, you know, uh, something I can learn from, uh, I'd appreciate it. All right, but I'm going to call this one done. I'm going to wrap this sucker up and send it up to Paul, and I'm hoping that this is going to be a good usable tool for him. Uh, he's aware that this is a new process that I'm trying to learn and that I wanted to test it on this piece right here. So if he, uh, maybe he'll uh, use it and hopefully it'll work. That's, uh, <laughs> that's all I got to say about that right there, but he's plenty aware of what we're doing to try to test this out. So anyway, that's going to be it. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you later.